Harvard Kennedy School presents three things you didn't know about U.S. elections. Number one, there is no right to vote in the U.S. Constitution. It was not in the original Constitution. It was not added in the Bill of Rights. This surprises most people. The states had already developed franchise requirements of their own, and the thinking in Philadelphia was that if they chose any particular standard, it might well antagonize people from some states. So in effect, they punted, didn't say anything, and left it to the states. There have been attempts to add a right to vote to the Constitution, and they have all failed and never come close. Number two, historically, voter suppression was not just a Southern problem. Most of us are quite aware that in the late 19th and the early 20th century, there were massive voter suppression and disenfranchisement efforts in the South that were aimed at African Americans. What is less well known is that there was a, an analogous movement less severe, but nonetheless important, in the northern states to keep immigrant workers from voting. There were literacy requirements to vote in many northern states, including Massachusetts. There was an English language literacy requirement that was passed in New York in 1921, and that remained on the books until the late 1960s. In Minnesota, there were laws that were passed that prevented people who work in the timber industry. These people were seen as itinerant and they were not allowed to vote. Or one of my favorite examples was the suppression of Jewish voters in New York City early in the 20th century for several years. When New York had an annual registration requirement, you had to register every year in order to vote. And in one year, in order to limit the voting strength of New York's Jews and particularly New York's Jewish socialists. The only registration days were on the Jewish high holidays of Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. Number three. In the late 1960s, the U.S. almost abandoned the Electoral College, but then it didn't. There has, in recent years, been a great deal of attention focused on the Electoral College, and with good reason, because we have had two presidents within the last 20 years who have been elected who did not win the popular vote. What people don't know is that we got very close to eliminating the Electoral College and replacing it with a national popular vote in 1969-70. The impetus for it was coming from several different directions. The first was that from the late 1940s throughout the 50s, there were movements to reform and nobody really thought that it was a very good institution or a very wise one. A second was the Supreme Court decisions on districting issues in the early 1960s, which proclaimed loudly and clearly and unmistakably that the fundamental democratic principle was one person, one vote. And it was very hard to, to embrace that principle without thinking that perhaps it should apply to presidential elections as well. In September of 1969, the House of Representatives voted by, I think it was 82 uh, percent, to amend the Constitution to get rid of the Electoral College and have a national popular vote. It was killed by a filibuster led by Southern senators. But there was a real democratic surge, a surge of a democratic ethos in the United States um, in the 1960s, and it almost carried our way forward uh, into uh, getting rid of the Electoral College. Thank you, Professor Kazar. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more, subscribe.